Welcome back to another edition of the Pegcast. I'm your host, Michael Pagani, joined alongside Florida Panthers 2019 draft pick, Cole Schwint. He also played with the Mississauga Steelheads in the Ontario Hockey League. Cole, how are you doing today? Not too bad. How are you? Well, you know, I, I just wrapped up uh, high school. Uh, you know, it's very odd to finish it in an online virtual world. Uh, not the best to say the least, but uh, yeah, that's everything that's going for me uh, basically today. And then I'm just very glad that, uh, you know, I'm interviewing you. Hey, thanks for having me. So, you know, what have you been doing during quarantine besides hockey, obviously? Um, well, it's been kind of the same as any other year. I think, you know, obviously a big part of it is just the gym. And um, since I've been home, you know, I've been in there five days a week and uh, just kind of trying to work on the small things and, and see what I can improve on. How has the cancellation of this past OHL season affected your mental health? Um, I think more than anything, it's kind of just stick to what you're good at. Um, I think, you know, hockey has been such a big part of my life and uh, not getting to play is obviously a little bit tough, but, um, you know, I had a great opportunity to go up and play in Syracuse and I kind of just be in that hockey mindset throughout the whole year. So, um, you know, kind of just sticking to sticking to what I know best and, uh, you know, not getting, you know, too low on the lows and, you know, too high on the highs, I think, uh, just sticking to, you know, where, where it's good and, uh, and keep playing hockey. Who was your favorite player or who is your favorite player growing up as a kid? Um, it's always changed. I think when I was growing up, I was a huge Senators fan. Uh, you know, I was kind of in that era where Danny Heatley, uh, Daniel Albertson, Jason Spezza were those three on Ottawa. And, you know, I kind of, I kind of grew up watching those guys. Um, and, and now I think, you know, I kind of just like to take little pieces of, of all the players in the NHL. Who was your biggest influence to get into hockey? Um, I, I gotta say my parents, I think, uh, you know, ever since I was younger, you know, ever since I can remember I was on skates. So, um, you know, just growing up, uh, playing the game of hockey, I, you know, I, I love being on the ice and uh, I know I'm, I'm sure I could talk to them now and, and they'd say they're pretty proud of exactly the way it went. Well, growing up in Kitchener, like you did, did you go see a lot of Rangers games as a kid? Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching uh, games every Friday night in the odd, um, you know, that place is always electric and I uh, actually got lucky enough to play uh, a couple times in that barn. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. I think the fans are, are awesome and uh, definitely one of the best places to play in the OHL. When did you realize that the OHL was a legit shot for yourself? Um, I think uh, when that came to life, I think that was uh, right at the end of the minor midget season. Uh, you know, they were kind of talking about the draft and uh, I got a couple calls from a different teams in the OHL and uh, you know, luckily I was selected by Mississauga and, uh, you know, got to, got a chance to play as a 16 year old. So, um, you know, I, I had nothing but great things to say about my time in the OHL. It's almost breathtaking when you realize like, oh my God, these teams, you know, they see, they have interest in me. They see something in me. They want to give me a shot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, I, I I'm so blessed to have that opportunity and, um, you know, it was awesome just to kind of live out my junior dream and, uh, you know, I get to play in Mississauga and then, you know, at the end of it, I'll get drafted by a great organization in, in Finn, Florida and uh, see where that takes me. You played your minor leagues with the Kitchener Rangers, you know, U16 AAA, in which you scored 27 points in 31 games. What was so good about your game at the time? Um, I mean, I feel like I was just more comfortable and, and confident than anything. I think playing for the same team growing up uh, all the way up, it obviously gave me a little bit of a boost and uh, you know, getting to, you know, be coached by a great coach. I think, you know, Dean DeSilva, I owe it all to him. Um, everything that I've done since minor midget. Um, but it, I don't know, it's a it, it, great group of guys back there. You know, I, I played however many years in minor hockey with them. And, um, you know, it was just, a, it was a fun year all around. Did you ever get a sense if there was a big roster turnover in the minor leagues from year to year? Or was it, or were you kind of playing with the same group of guys? For the most part, it was the same group of guys. Um, you know, that's kind of how minor hockey goes. You got your your group of players that play year in and year out. Um, obviously, you know, you pick up, you know, pieces here and there. But um, for the most part, everybody kind of stayed together. You were a fourth round draft pick uh, in the OHL priority selection back in 2017. What did it mean for you to get selected by the Steelheads? Yeah, I mean, for, you know, I'm sure every kid would say the same thing, you know, OHL is, uh, is one of the best development leagues in the world. And, you know, it's kind of what the, what took me to the next level. And, 
um, you know, just, just being, just seeing your name picked. I think that's the biggest thing. And, uh, you know, that was the first time through the draft selection process. And, uh, you know, I hadn't seen that yet before I saw a few of my buddies go the year before, but, um, you know, just getting to see my name on the screen and, and then get a call from the, you know, the general manager saying that, you know, I am a steelhead now. And, um, you know, it, it was awesome. I was super excited to get down there and get started. And, uh, you know, looking back at it now, uh, no better place to play than in Mississauga. Where were you when you found out that you were going to get drafted by Mississauga? Um, well, I was sitting in my room, um, kind of just alone watching the draft. You know, and there's all guys have their way of doing it. Some guys are out golfing, doing whatnot, but I uh, kind of just kept it to myself, sat in my room and, uh, you know, was kind of just following along online and saw my name selected and uh, heard some screaming downstairs. What did you do to celebrate the moment? Uh, I just had to have all family members over, um, you know, had a good dinner, talked it out with them. I think they were all super excited and uh, now getting to see the, the, you know, the draft process with my younger brother, uh, Brady, just going to Kitchener. You know, it kind of comes full circle. I was more excited for him than I was for myself. What was the biggest challenge for you during your first season with Mississauga? I think it was just the speed of the game. You know, obviously every every rank you go up from minor hockey to, you know, the OHL and now, you know, up to the NHL, AHL. I think it, the game just gets faster and, um, you know, definitely coming from that minor midget year, uh, it was a big eye opener. Uh, you know, I always tell the story that I walked into camp and, I saw big name guys, Owen Tippett, Mike McLeod, Nate Bash, and all these guys on the ice that are, you know, getting ready to take that next step. And I'm just starting, you know, my, my tenure in the OHL. And, um, you know, obviously it's, it's a lot bigger, faster, stronger hockey and, uh, you know, getting to kind of grow into my body and, and learn, you know, the aspects of the game that I'm better at. Um, definitely use that to my advantage. And, uh, you know, at the end of it all, I think uh, it, was, it was great for my development. How did you adjust your game so that it would fit the way the Steelheads run their offense and run their defense? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the biggest thing is you just kind of hold yourself accountable. I think um, there's a lot of moving pieces when you're playing hockey and then the way the systems that Mississauga plays, it was, you know, kind of fit in the same way that we played in minor hockey and, uh, you know, kind of just getting to sit back and, and, and kind of take it all in at the start and then trying to, you know, uh, give all I can to the team, I think. Uh, moving into those systems, it was it was a lot easier than uh, than most people would expect. You registered 18 points in 66 games, but you know a lot of players when they're first entering the Ontario Hockey League, you know they talk about the grind of the season. When did you realize that you know 66 games is you know a, a lot more than what you had previously played? Yeah, I mean I feel that um, you know coming in as a 16 year old, not many you know fourth round draft pick 16 year old kids get to play and. You know, that that more than anything was more of, a, you know, kind of being able to take that and and be excited for that experience more than, you know, the, the ice time of the games I was playing or the points I was getting. Um, I think just playing in the OHL that first year was was unbelievable. And then, you know, coming back the next year, having that, you know, the first year to, you know, build off of that one, I think um, that that all of that of, of it all together, it was it was all good. What is the story of your first OHL goal? Oh, uh, it was in Owen Sound, uh, fifth or sixth game of the year. And uh, it was just, uh, it was a nothing play, kind of passed it back up to the D, shot on net. And then I kind of just chipped it from behind the net into the blue paint and uh, the goalie ended up kicking it into, into his own net. So a um, little bit of a cheeky one, but uh, take it. You know, uh, there are a lot of, you know, good and bad bounces. And obviously that's for, uh, you know, for you, that's a great bounce for your first. <laughs> Yeah, I got lucky with that one. And that must have been kind of like a monkey off the back moment because I'm sure that the team was almost rattling, you know, razzing you and egging you on like, okay, when this when is this guy going to pop off and score? Yeah, I mean, more than anything, I think they're uh, kind of supportive in the, you know, you don't need to score to play. You can do a lot of, you know, other little things that, that are, are better than scoring. But yeah, they were, they were all excited for me when I got the first one. And, uh, you know, you can only go up from there. Well, you also played in your first uh, career playoff game that same season. How important was it for you to get that under your belt and get used to the pressure? Yeah, that the playoffs my first year was, uh, that was a tight series. We ended up going to game six with Barry. Um, but even just being able to be on the bench and watch, you know, I didn't play a whole lot, obviously, just because it's 16-year-old, you know, playoff hockey. But 
um, just getting to be there and, and be with the guys. I know they took it the always and, and, you know, even like the, the drafted NHL guys, they took it very serious, which they should. And, um, you know, being in the OHL playoffs, that's no, no joke. And, um, you know, just getting to see it and watch them play and, and, you know, see what they were doing. I think, you know, you can take a lot of that, even in the regular season. You must have had to get used to the environment as well, because everything is much more tight checking in the playoffs than it is in the regular season. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's a big environment change, um, you know, just going from regular season hockey to you know playoffs to winning it. It's all, it's on the line there. So, um, you know, you got four playoff series to go through and then look for the championship. Did you happen to develop any playoff superstitions? Um, I haven't played in too many playoffs. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten any playoff superstitions, but um, I got my little ones during the games. Well, during that series, you know, game four, it went to overtime. What was it like to be around the team, whether you played in it or not? But what was it like to, you know, be in a playoff overtime atmosphere? Yeah, it was awesome. You know, obviously, overtime is the most exciting kind of hockey, I think. Um, you know, both teams have already played the full 60 minutes and now in there, you know, they're empty in the tank. So um, it was awesome. I think, you know, remembering back, um, just getting to watch the players play and, and everything and the fans were, you know, going a little electric. So it was great. How did you like the OHL's transition from four on four to three on three OT during regular season? Yeah, it was, it was sweet, obviously. Um, you know, in overtime, you're looking for you know, a goal just to, you know, a little bit more excitement at the end of the game. The fans have been in the seats for the full 60 minutes and, you know, they're looking for a little bit of something at the end. So three on three overtime is, is awesome. And there's obviously a way to play it. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not as structured as five on five, but um, it's, it's a whole heck of a lot more exciting. Well, during your second year, you know, you completely exploded tallying 49 points in 68 games. How rewarding was that for you? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. I, you know, I credit all to, uh, you know, the coaching staff there, JR, James Richmond, um, Jeff Krizakos, Brennan Taylor, they all took the time to, you know, kind of work on little parts of my game and, um, you know, just getting to take that experience that I had in the first year and bring it into the second year, I think, you know, it gave me that, you know, one step forward for, you know, confidence and, and all of that moving forward in the second year. What did you work on in the prior off season for you to completely flip the script? Cause I mean, you know, you were tied for second on team with goals in 19 with Owen Tippett, and then you were fourth on team with the, uh, you know, assists in 30. Yeah. I think it was mainly just, you know, getting your work gym workouts. And I think at that time I was kind of growing into my body as well. I think, you know, the height uh, kind of stalted there and um, you know, just got to, you know, put on some weight and, you know, add some size to, you know, a little bit of a lanky frame. Um, I think just, you know, being, be, having the confidence to come in as a second year guy, I think, um, you know, getting to play that first year, you see the always leave and then now you're, you're kind of climbing up the ranks yourself. So um, just, just coming back in and just playing the sport. I think hockey is such a huge part of my life and, and, it, you know, it, it's just been a lot of fun. How does Owen Tippett add to your game? Yeah, Tippy, Tippy's an unbelievable player. Um, even, even since day one, you know, I said, walking into, Mississauga that first day and then seeing him on the ice and he's just such a big boy and um, you know he, he's got everything that he needs to be a you know a full-time NHL player and you saw it this year he got you know he, he played awesome in the playoffs um, got to got to watch that from the press box when I was up in Florida there so he's just he's just got everything you know obviously it says it all just the first round draft pick and and all uh, everything that he has to his name but um, he's just a great player great speed great shot um, you know it's nothing like I've ever seen before. Well, like you mentioned, you are joining Owen in Florida for the future. You know, is it kind of funny that you guys both got drafted by the same team? Yeah, I mean, it comes full circle for sure. I remember him getting drafted by Florida. And then, um, you know, when it was my draft time, um, seeing my name picked by, by the Panthers as well. You know, he was one of the first ones to call me and say congratulations and said, hey, we'll, we'll see you at camp. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, Owen put in a good word for you. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, during the 2019 playoffs, you know, the Steelheads, they finished, you know, really well during the regular season. How disappointing is it to knowing that you guys probably put expectations, whether it's on you personally and the team itself, and you guys, you know, didn't really live up to it? Yeah, I mean, that uh, you're talking about the, the Sudbury. Sudbury. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember back there, um, you know, we kind of ran into a hot goalie, Uka Pekalupin, and he, he was standing on his head and you know, we couldn't really get anything by him. And obviously it's a little frustrating, you know, knowing that we could have, you know, real, made a real push for it. But 
Um, you know, looking back on it now, I think kind of just taking that, you know, that, that grit and that drive and, and, you know, bringing it into the next season. I think that was, you know, kind of what we were doing. How did Sudbury keep you in check? Because obviously, like I, you know, just mentioned, I read off your regular season stats and you played phenomenal, but you know, in the playoffs, they really did play good defense against you. Yeah. I mean, the Sud- like that year, that team was, was very good. You know, they were structurally, structurally sound and, you know, the goalie kind of, kind of had us on check. I, I don't even know how many goals, you know, throughout the four games, I think we probably had six or seven goals. So um, actually maybe not even that they probably shut us out a few times, but um, I don't know. They just, they just played the right way. And, you know, at the end of the day, the better team will, will, will come on top. When going up against a top tier goalie in UPL or Uka Pekka Lukin, and then having a star center, you know, in Quinton Byfield, how does that change the game planning, uh, you know, going up against them? Yeah. I mean, on one side of the spectrum, you got to keep, you know, Byfield in check and, um, you know, he's such an unbelievable player. You see him now. And, um, even back in the day, probably if you could say a few years ago back in the day, but he, he's, he was a great player and, uh, you know, he, he scored a few on us there, but, um, you know, on the other side of the spectrum there too, the goalies, the goalies red hot. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tough when you run into a hot goalie, just cause you know, you feel like you got everything going the right way and you just can't get one past them. So. Well, during that off season, you did get drafted in the third round by the Florida Panthers. What was that moment like for you? It was awesome. I was, I kind of took it the same way that I did with the OHL draft, kind of just in my room by myself. And, you know, it was that this time it was on TV and, uh, you know, just, just heard my name in the background and, and got a phone call right away. So um, it was awesome. And, uh, you know, I couldn't be more excited for the future. Who called you? Was it the GM or the head coach? Uh, it was the GM. Dale Town gave me a call right after the draft. And what was that, you know, day like for you, you know, from basically start to finish? Was it, you know, just getting ready for the draft? Was it, you know, doing something else beforehand? Yeah, I think kind of just taking it, uh, you know, by myself, kind of keeping it as simple as possible. I wasn't going to be out of my house and, you know, running around. I think it was just, you know, get up in the morning and get your breakfast. And I was back in my room just watching the draft. During the unfinished season back in 2019-20, it's crazy that it's already been a year, but, you know, you were relied on heavily as the first-line winger. How did you make sure to live up to those expectations that were put on by fans and maybe management uh, as well? Yeah, I mean, you see it every year. Um, you know, every year, the ways you're leaving, uh, everybody kind of climbs up the ranks a little bit more. So, um, you know, just going into that season, I knew I kind of had – a shot, you know, just got drafted, um, had a lot of confidence going into that year. And, um, you know, I, I felt that I, you know, you kind of just take it at the reins and, and run with it. I think, um, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't need to think about it as much as people think, you know, you got to just um, take it as is and, uh, and just play hockey. What does it mean to accomplish all these individual goals that you, you set for yourself, whether it's the amount of points that you score or just the way that you play? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I set personal goals more than just, you know, kind of helping my team night in, night out. Um, you know, I feel throughout my whole OHL process and, and uh, you know, all of that that happened, I think just being able to, you know, say that I, I am the player I am today, um, you know, taking what I've learned throughout those three years and, and you know, kind of keeping it going and, and, and now moving on to, uh, you know, hopefully the, the AHL next year and then see see what can happen from there. So uh, just taking everything that I've learned and try to apply it everywhere else. When did you find out that the OHO season was going to get postponed then later canceled? Well, we were on the bus on the way to North Bay um, for a game on Thursday. And that was when uh, the USHL had just postponed their season as well. And I remember we were sitting on the bus and then, you know, you see that up, up at the front of the bus coach gets a call and, um, you know, he, he pulls over the bus and, and we're turning around going home. So uh, we didn't think it was going to be more than a two, three week thing. But obviously COVID, everybody knows it now. It's been a lot longer than that. So unfortunately, they had to cancel our season that year and and then, you know, didn't get to play this year as well. Well, with all the vaccines that have been out, you know, hopefully everyone gets vaccinated. That way we can see fans back in the stands for this upcoming AHL season for you and, you know, OHL season for me. Yeah, yeah, that'll be nice. You know, a fun fact that I read about when I was researching you is that you actually did get invited to play for Team Canada at the World Juniors uh, this past time in Edmonton. How awesome did it uh, feel to get invited and, you know, get recognized with all the hard work that you put in? 
Yeah, it was awesome. You know, I have I haven't been able to uh, experience any Hockey Canada events, uh, you know, growing up. So this was my first one, and um, you know, it was awesome. You know, you see some familiar faces in the OHL, and you just get to you know go out there and you know have fun. I think it was more going out there for the experience. You know, unfortunately, I didn't get to end up playing for the team, but you know, just taking that experience and um, you know keeping it with me. Shane Wright was among, you know, a number of, nom- uh, you know, players that got nominated for, you know, the selection camp. What was it like, you know, what did he bring to the selection camp that you saw? Yeah, he's, he's a phenomenal player. Um, you know, he'll, he'll have his, you know, where he's going to play when he's growing up and he'll, he'll be in the NHL one day for sure. But um, he's just a very, you know, responsible kid. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's weird to say that as a 15 year old, 16 year old kid, but he's, he's very responsible and, he knows where he needs to be on the ice. And, you know, I got a chance to play with him a little bit at that camp as well. And, um, you know, he's just got a great, he's got great hockey sense and uh, he always knows where to be. I find it crazy that, you know, at the age that he is, he's already, you know, someone that you highlight on the chalk, on the chalkboard whiteboard in the locker room before the game. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you playing in the O going back, um, you know, going into Kingston, you got his name highlighted for sure. Uh, you know, you, you, like every time you go in there, you know, they're coming into our barn. He's got something to give and um, he's a player that, you know, doesn't take a shift off. Well, had the season not ended, it seems as, it seems as though that you guys were battling or, you know, you guys were going to finish at a 65 point pace and battle with Barry for the fifth, uh, you know, playoff spot to go up against Sudbury. Do you guys kind of have a rivalry with the Wolves? Um, I mean, we do play them a bunch. We play them three times, you know, in each barn and, uh, they've always been a great team, uh, you know, when I when I was playing back in the OHL and, um, you know, they always had a lot to give and, and such a passionate team, you know, they were well coached and um, I wouldn't say it's more a rivalry, probably just, you know, we ended up being in the same spot uh, that all the years we were there and um, it was all, you know, it was always fun to battle with them. Ultimately, it seemed as though you guys were going to go up against the Oshawa Generals in the playoffs, uh, you know, were they a tough matchup for you during the regular season? Yeah, they had a strong team. Um, you know, they had a bunch of older guys and um, drafted players as well. And, you know, they were always such a skilled team. Uh, we would It would have been nice to see what we would have had against them in the playoffs. Reflecting on your OHO career, what game stood out for you the most? Was it the teddy bear toss or maybe just a one-off game? Um, I Honestly, I think probably um, the game against Kitchener in Mississauga. Um, you know, our goalie, Jacob Ingham just got traded back there, traded to Kitchener and he was finally back in Mississauga. And, uh, you know, we were down four, one going into the third and ended up getting a couple goals in a row there and ended up winning in overtime. So that one definitely stands out. The crowd was awesome. And, uh, we were wearing the, uh, the special black Panther jerseys. And I'm sure that, you know, I, I certainly do miss the roar of the crowd and I'm sure you feel the same. Cause I'm sure, you know, that game must've been so electric with the fans. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different environment when there's fans in the building and uh, you know, I can't thank all the fans in Mississauga enough for that time. And uh, it was always great to, you know, play in front of them. You had the opportunity to play for the Syracuse crunch in the AHL this season. How were you able to transition your game from the OHL to the AHL? Yeah, I think, you know, it was kind of the same thing as taking it from minor hockey to the OHL. I think it's obviously gets a lot faster and, the guys are a whole heck of a lot bigger. And uh, I think it's just kind of, you know, trying not to get nervous and, and, you know, just keep playing your game. I think, you you know, you got to obviously understand that you're there for a reason and, um, you know, just, just taking it one step at a time and, uh, and focusing on, you know, what you can do rather than what you can't. Was there someone who helped you get adjusted to the style of style of play in the OHL? AHL? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, one of those guys, uh, Scott Wilson, you know, I, I owe a bunch of, well, this whole year to him. Um, you know, I got got a chance to start Florida camp with him and, um, you know, got to pick his brain a bunch. And then he came to Syracuse with us as well and played a bunch of games. And um, and then I ended up getting to have a 20 hour ride with him in the car up back up to Florida and, uh, and got to pick his brain a little bit. I'm sure he wanted to tell me you know, keep my mouth shut, but um, had a whole heck of a lot of questions for him. And, and he always had an answer for me. So that was awesome. That was basically your quarantine brother. Yeah, pretty much. 
Well, as we wrap up this interview here, you know, we saw in this past OHO draft, your younger brother Brady get drafted to Kitchener. What were some words of, a, of wisdom that you passed along to him? Yeah, I just said, you know, obviously the OHL hockey is not going to be the same as minor hockey and just taking what you're good at and obviously working on stuff that, you know, you can improve on. Um, you know, your, your first year is kind of a wash. Uh, you know, you get a chance to play. If not, you play junior B or wherever you end up playing. I think it's just every year you got to you gotta focus on, you know, getting better. And, and that's still the same, same goes for me right now, I think. Um, you know, so a little somebody older would probably give them better advice, but um, I think, you know, just kind of, kind of going through that OHL process, I think, um, you know, it's just, a, just little things that I can help them out with. Well, I'd like to thank Cole Schwinn for joining me on today's podcast. Thank you again, Cole. No worries. Thanks for having me.